Welcome to this time of worship on this Sunday after the Christmas celebrations. I'm here in my home in front of our Christmas tree and our Christmas decorations as you are in your homes today in front of your own decorations. I imagine you maybe on a favorite chair or snuggled up on a couch with a favorite blanket this morning as you receive this worship and while our celebrations might not be as full as in other years, and we have had to remain physically distant from one another, I pray that, that you are still as grateful for all that Christ does for us by coming into our lives, meeting us where we are at today and always. And did you know that Christmas is 12 days long? Of course you did because of the 12 days of Christmas song. And so our worship, as this falls well within those 12 days, continues our Christmas joys and celebrations with a service of lessons and carols. Service of lessons and carols came out of England in the late 1800s and has been a tradition in many congregations ever since. Often uh, known to have nine scripture texts and carols, we have an adapted version this year. We'll hear the way that Jesus is introduced in three of the Gospels, and then our intern Amy will share with us about Simeon and Anna in the Gospel of Luke that we are following this year, and the ways in which they become the first to proclaim Jesus as this Messiah, the one that we have been waiting for. So I also invite you to come back next week. It'll be January 3rd already by next Sunday, and we will be bringing in the new year uh, back on Zoom all together at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. So join us for that, and we will that morning be blessing our prayer shawls. We have this amazing group of people who knit and crochet these shawls, blankets, um, and little squares, and they pray for the people who will receive these as they knit and as they crochet. We'll be blessing those in worship. Then we invite you to come back to church between 2 and 4 p.m. that day to receive a blessing from myself or intern Amy, a blessing for you personally, for your family, for your household, for this new year. Let's bring this new year in together and ask God's blessings upon it. But now I invite you to to just sit back and receive each of these readings and these carols. Let the words soak in, the music soak in, just a, a maybe a little deeper than they usually have, um, than they usually do in a busier time of life and worship. Will you pray with me? God who comes small and humble, wrapped in mystery and glory. We pray that you would awaken us to live with eyes wide open to your presence, your presence that is with us in our sanctuary, in our church building, in our homes, out on the streets, in our conversations around the dinner table, in the checkout line at the grocery store or at the post office, wherever we find ourselves, Lord, you are there. God, you are the light of all life. We ask that you fill us today, our worship, our homes, our families, with your hope, your joy, your love, and your peace. Let us rejoice as we receive these carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with open and loving hearts. In your son's holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. And our opening carol is led this morning by the Parker family, O Come All Ye Faithful.
is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had been born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
from Mark, the first chapter. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one, calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. From John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, and who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Love has come, a light in the darkness. Love shines forth in the Bethlehem skies. See, all heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how their song of joy arises. Love, love, born unto you, a Savior. Love, love, glory to God on high. Love is born, come share in the 
Love is God now must sleep in the hay. See the glow in the eyes of his mother. What is the name her heart is saying? Love, love, love is the name she whispers. Love, love, Jesus Emmanuel. everlasting and free. Love is Jesus within and among us. Love is the peace our hearts are seeking. Love, love, love is the gift of Christmas. Love, love, grace to you, God on high. What are some things that you have waited for? Possibly recently you've waited for a package or maybe a pizza or possibly you've been waiting for a baby or healing. What is the longest time you've had to wait for something? Was it hours, days, months, or maybe even years? And is there something out there that you are still waiting for? Today's lesson comes from Luke chapter 2. This is where Jesus is presented in the temple. I'd like to share with you this image of a painting by John Mont Hoff as we begin at verse 21. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present to him the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophet, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phinuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour, she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free the word of the Lord. I love how this image portrays the joy and excitement of Simeon and Anna as they see and know that they are in the presence of our Savior. Simeon and Anna had been waiting a very long time for God's promises. They've been waiting to be set free and to be saved in a world that was waiting for peace and for joy. In the Bible, Simeon is described as a devout and righteous man. 
In other words, he was loyal to God and honorable to how he treated others. Earlier in Simeon's life, God had told Simeon that he would not die until he had seen with his own eyes the promised Messiah. We don't know exactly how old Simeon was when God made this promise to him, but the Bible does tell us that Simeon believed and waited. This must have been an exciting promise for Simeon. Can you imagine just waiting year after year as you praised and worshiped God keeping your eyes open for the promised Savior. What do you think Simeon imagined this promised Savior would look like? In Hebrews 11.1, 1, God's word tells us that faith is being sure that we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Even though Simeon could not see or understand how he would see the Savior, he believed God. One day as Simeon was going about his business, the Holy Spirit came to him and told him to go to the temple. When Simeon arrived at the temple, he saw a young woman holding her baby in her arms with her husband standing next to her. God's Spirit told Simeon that this baby was the promised Savior. Immediately, Simeon went to Mary, reached out to hold her baby boy, he held him in his arms and he began to praise to God. He praised for God's promises of seeing salvation with his own eyes, announcing and blessing this Christ as the Christ of salvation for all people, Israelites and Gentiles. As Simeon was praising God and blessing Mary and Joseph, there was another person in the temple that day. Her name was Anna. And Anna was a widow. She had been married only seven years when her husband had passed away. And after her husband died, she began serving God in the temple. She was now 84 years old and considered a prophetess. Because she had a close relationship with the Lord, she knew that God had promised a savior. And as she heard Simeon's praises, she came to see what was going on. As soon as she saw the child, she immediately thanked the Lord for sending the Savior who was going to take away the sins of the world. Simeon and Anna saw and believed that Jesus was God's promised Savior. Today we have God's word that teaches us about God's promises and the promise to send the Savior and how God's promises came true. Just as Simeon and Anna had faith that God would keep God's promises, we have faith that what Jesus did to save us from our sins thousands of years ago are true. None of us were living in the days when Jesus did this for us. We believe it even though we did not see it. This year has been a year of waiting for many 2020 has brought significant changes to every parts of our lives, how we live, where we work, how we work, what this means for the kids, what it means for our family, and what is really important to us. Many of our hopes and dreams were put on hold. The entire world is waiting waiting to be healed, waiting to rebuild, and waiting for peace among us. Through all this waiting, our community here at LCP has been and continues to come together, sharing God's love, light, and message of hope. A year that was filled with hope as we continue to grow boldly in God's mission, engaging each other in and around our community in boundless joy. Baby Jesus came into the world to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild nations, and to bring peace among us. The people then needed and yearned for help, 
just as people still do today. We are all beloved children of God, and that is a cause for hope. And hope can be contagious, something we carry with us through every season. And as we look forward into the new year, how might we bring hope to others? Are you more like a Simeon who brings joy and love to every task and happiness to everyone you meet? Or are you more like Anna, who is so moved by the one who will save us that she goes to spread the good news? What are you waiting for? join me as we pray for the world that God so loves and for all those who are in need. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that you are a God that that is not far off, but a God that comes to us to be with us, to know us, to love us, to share in the experience of this journey of life. But not only that, comes to transform us and to transform our journeys. God, we pray for that transformation to continue in our hearts, in our church, and in your world. God, we pray for those who have, who have not heard the good news of your love and your grace and your mercy, or those who, who do not yet believe it, God, we, we pray that, that they would have someone put in their path who would be able to share that good news in a way that, that they would be able to receive it and know it and live in it. God, we pray for all those who are receiving COVID vaccinations in these weeks. We pray for safety. We pray that it works. We pray for all of those who've been working all these months so hard to create this vaccine. We are so grateful for their energy, their tireless effort to that end. God, we pray for those who continue to struggle with this disease. 
for doctors and nurses who care for them, for loved ones who cannot be near them. Lord, we pray for all those who have struggled in this holiday season with depression and anxiety, with addiction, with the deep isolation that we have endured for more than nine months now. Lord, it just weighs on us. Continue to to work in and through us to find ways to connect with one another regularly, that we might walk this hard journey in solidarity with one another, knowing that we are truly not alone. Let us be, as a church, your hands and your feet and your heart and your voice in this world. As we enter into this new year, Lord, let us enter it with even braver and more courageous steps, steps that would allow us to truly become that bright shining light that all would see and know that you are a God that fulfills your promises, that makes good on your word, that comes to us in our aid, not always in the way that we want, but in the way that we need. Keep us open to the ways in which you are working in and through us in these days, Lord. Continue to reach into our hearts, transform us and shape us more and more into your image. Lord, these prayers and these praises we humbly offer in the words of Christ himself, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord, who is present with us in all moments, bless you and keep you. Make God's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. Look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Filled with the presence of Christ in these Christmas celebrations, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Amen.